the fear mongering has turned into war mongering over these past two weeks. The Canadian trucker protests were the previous false flag. This is the next one. Both of them have the obvious in common. They're fake. I mean, at least obvious to me or someone with their brain still intact, not calcified by fluoride. So let me explain it. Mainstream media are the biggest liars of them all. There has not been one live video feed, one legitimate video, even a legitimate story on what's really going on. They make up whatever narrative they want, such as Canadian truckers protesting, then just use pictures of trucks, videos of trucks driving, different protests, implying that those are of the event. But if you read the caption in the news story, which people don't do, they literally say, this is from somewhere else. Speak to someone actually in those countries, you will find out that what the media is painting as the truth is not what's really going on. The control these people have over the media has detached us from reality. The mass is believing what they are told in that news. Of course, there is a reason they are painting the picture, setting the stage, doing these news stories. They want us to do something next that they're going to tell us. You know, what's their agenda behind this event, that event? In the trucker protests, they recently said that bank accounts related to the protesters may be frozen under Trudeau's emergency order. We know this is all about control. Are they trying to justify attaching bank accounts to health passports? If you give everyone some type of digital identification to verify their health status, you have their personal identity in a database which you can then attach their bank account, social security number. So anytime a person makes a purchase, goes anywhere, you know who, where, and what they are doing. Then when the fakest of the fake events, which I can't really talk about <coughs> climate change, <laughs> happens, it becomes pretty obvious what they would want to restrict. Fuel usage, red meat, but this stuff never comes by force. The sheep will willingly submit to it while it's being blamed on other things out of their control, such as inflation. Well, if people can't afford to go on vacation, you don't have to worry about the jet fuel usage. Now, I thought they were going to use the truckers' protests to stage more food shortages, or at least it was a possibility, which they still might do, but I honestly didn't expect the freezing of bank accounts related to the protesters. An American convoy is also forming, which means probably another card in their deck is being played. That's something you definitely don't want to see. If they do something in Canada, and then the same thing starts happening in the U.S. Global, new world order, one world order. <laughs> They're all working together. No countries are separate. They're all one. And that brings up the question of what's up with this warmongering false flag. So Fox News, what's on the TV, it's all warmongering. But this article tells some of the truth. Biden's Russia speech, hypocrisy, lies, and warmongering. On Tuesday, the day before the United States had previously claimed Russia would launch a full-scale invasion of Ukraine, U.S. President Joe Poopy Pants Biden gave a speech in which he doubled down on his threats of a bloody, destructive war, even though no Russian invasion was forthcoming. Earlier in the day, the Russian government, which has insisted that it has no plans to attack Ukraine, announced that it is pulling back its troops from the Ukrainian border following the completion of a series of joint war games with Belarus. The claim of an imminent invasion of Ukraine has been repeated endlessly by the U.S. government and parroted in the media. In his speech on Tuesday, Biden was compelled on one hand to acknowledge the reality that no Russian attack had occurred, while doubling down on the United States' threats. Every part of Biden's speech 
was filled with hypocrisy, lies, and warmongering. So as usual, the government is lying to you, manipulating you through their control of the media. You know, they'll throw out 10 lies and half a truth, but people don't recognize the truth. If everyone in America, not just America, but any country could talk to someone from Russia, from the Ukraine, another country, after seeing what they've been told about said country in the news by their friends their whole life, they would realize we're the same people. Maybe different language, skin color, height, we look different, but most people are honest, hardworking, and being manipulated and scared by a bunch of evil lizards. That's when the masses would turn on the government, these people in power. But again, since those clowns have control of the media and people are trusting those media sources, it's a bit of a pipe dream. And yeah, you do have a large amount of people who distrust the government, but still believe a large amount of information being fed to them. The amount that are truly awake is such a small minority, it's not really in the playbook. You know, I have people reach out to me all the time, and it's usually disinformation or misinformation that they're given, and then they ask, Frank, what do you think of this? And I just tell them it's fake. It's not. Just ignore it. So wars fake or real, tend to crash the economy, which the top percent benefit from because you know they get insider tips before it happens. And Russia is always blamed as hackers when the CIA decides to hit the switch. By that I mean the U.S. government has control over major power and telecom companies and with a simple phone call can have them do their bidding. We have seen and are still seeing politicians, people in the club, celebrities, whatever you want to call them, benefiting at the expense of everyone else. Before, you know what, <coughs> they pulled their money out of the stock market. They've manipulated big pharma stocks. Amazon is making insane money. I shouldn't have to point that out. With war, those that control the food, fuel, necessities, profit beyond what you can imagine. And there are already articles about cyber attacks in the Ukraine, some mentioning government websites and banks were compromised. So it's pretty crazy how much crap these lunatics are willing to stage to enact their crooked policies. Oh, your bank accounts aren't safe because of cyber attacks. So they will create some new system which they control for everyone to participate in. Thing is, the cyber attacks never happen, you know, they're just making stuff up and hitting power switches off to scare people. So the new systems will be under the guise of being independent. Oh, the government doesn't own this, these are private entities, but that is absolutely not the truth. And yeah, this goes all the way to the social credit system, which I've spoken about before, but the reason the government is going so crazy, the fear mongering, propaganda, warmongering at this point, it seems like they're really, really buckling down is because in order for their plan to work, they need as many people as possible to participate in their system. Hey, if you don't play the game, they can't win. That's the way I look at it. Don't play their game. Don't listen to them. Don't consider their rules. Once you start doing that, hey, they've been playing the game for thousands of years. You think you're going to win? No. So, Thank you guys for joining me today. If you could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so you don't get notified of my videos. Therefore, go to frank defoncom to support me through all of my businesses as usual. Guys, always wearing my Wi-Fi shielding clothing underneath. We'll do a little test next vlog for you guys that are curious about it. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow.